Hi, I'm Paweł Spechalski and today let's take a look at some of the new hardware that the Matek or the Matter 6 company put on the market in the last few weeks. And we begin with the first GPS unit, then we will go to the second GPS unit and finally I will show you their brand new flight controller oriented for the airplane usage. But let's begin with the GPS. So far GPS was in the in the offer of the of the Matek or the Matek SIS was known from this series which is M8Q uh, equipped together with the uh, HMC 583 magnetometer which kind of really was a super nice uh, super small equivalent to the for example Baytian BN880. Oh, but with relatively small antenna there were always some kind of the problems with the accuracy and the sensitivity of the receiver. Then Matek showed something slightly better which is this board which is still the same antenna and still M8 series of the Ublox GPS but equipped, but equipped with the CAN bus that allows a better connection to Ardu Pilot and with the proper firmware also to the uh, latest releases with INAV. And now, now they are showing this board which is M9N5883 which is an equivalent of this uh, small board which is the M9 series of the Ublox GPS receiver and the QMC5883 magnetometer. Probably the, the only sensible option for the magnetometer right now. So, like I said, this is form factor more or less of the Baytian BN883, no, BN880, uh, much bigger antenna than the previous generation of Matex, which kinda is the price. Putting this on the 5 incher probably is not really the best idea. However, the airplane will kindly accept this uh, uh, big antenna as well as some bigger quads, like for example my Pirx 7 I have over here. Putting this thing in the back of the Pirx was absolutely not a problem at all. What this thing offers, besides the bigger bigger form factor. First of all, it offers much better uh, in-flight accuracy. It, uh, there is less jitter, better filtering on the position, so this means that the quadcopter should be able to hold position better. On top of that, it also has the higher sensitivity, possibility to track more uh, more GPS satellites and not only because this also works with the Galileo, Baytian, no, not the Baytian, Beidou, I think this is Beidou called the Chinese one, and the GLONASS and better uh, startup on hot cold and so on and so on and so on comparing to the M8 and this is this is the antenna. Bear in mind I have not tested this thing in the air yet because of the bloody weather that it's outside so it's kind of waiting for me to have the opportunity to test it. However from the from the tests I did here uh, inside, it really has a super low jitter on the position and the velocity and keeps the track super 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 nicely. Bear in mind this thing uses slightly different version of the Ublox protocol and is not supported by the INAV 2.5. To have this unit connected to INAV, you need at least uh, INAV 2.6, which hopefully will be released pretty soon, or the Ardu Pilot. Uh, it will not work with Betaflight, by the way. Okay, so this is the antenna number one. GPS antenna number one. The GPS antenna number two that I will be showing you is this board. Uh, this is the same antenna, uh, the same big form factor and the better uh, GPS chipset, which is the Ublox M9. M, M9, M, no, M9N, but equipped with the own CPU, own barometer, own magnetometer and the CAN bus. So, if you have the Ardu Pilot and the board that has the CAN bus, you can just forget about the serial port, you plug this thing to the uh, CAN bus on, for example, on the Matek H7 or the, I don't know, probably the Pixhawk also has the CAN bus. And because it's this big antenna with nice sensitivity and nice tracking, it really should give you a nice a nice position and of course with the magnetometer and the barometer. This thing over here, uh, this 
chipset uh, over here, the small with the hole, is the Infineon DPS 310, which is probably right now the best barometer on the market, which offers a super nice uh, uh, barometric pressure accuracy tracking and the position hold. Bear in mind, this board is can be used as uh, with the standard Ublox protocol, which is uh, over here on one of the no on this. Oh, this one? No, I, I'm wrong, I'm sorry. Uh, over here we have the CAN connector, uh, which works with the compatible uh, flight controllers. Over here we have the connector, which works with the MSP protocol and can fit the altitude, uh, position and the magnetic orientation over one serial port without having to attach anything via the I2C. And of course, traditional I2C connector if you want to just to use the DPS-302 or the magnetic meter and with the same for a factor it currently waits to be used on one of my builds equipped with INAV 2.6 and uh, on the GPSs that's all uh, the same antenna as the standard M9M 5883 nice tracking nice accuracy but instead of having to connect to both serial port and the I2C, you just use one serial connector or one CAN bus connector. And the third hardware I want to show you is uh, this one. This is the... okay, let's, let's do it like that. This is the Matek F722WPX. Last time, probably somewhere uh, around last year, Matek released the 722PX, which was a standard 36 by 36 with a fancy uh, PDB attached to it flight controller, which was one of the first one, maybe even the first one, has the commercial usage of the FreeSky Pixel OSD. This board is the next iteration of the idea from the F722PX in the form factor that is really suited, more suited and only suited for the fixed wings usages on the airplanes, flying wings and so on and so on and so on. So, so what we have? We have the standard sandwich approach, uh, this time without the top cover. There is only a bottom cover which you use to attach to your build. And uh, because on the lower side, oh, focus, 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 focus. Why you're not focusing? Because on the lower side we have the uh, Pixel OSD from FreeSky, we have a big choke for the voltage stabilization and on the top side we of course have the F722 CPU slot for the SD card attached like that, so not really the most convenient way to have access, free access to the to the SD card itself. We have the integrated PDB for two motors and a lot of connectors for the serial ports and other outputs and as well as the, for example, what we have there. We have the VTX switch, we have two cameras, we have five serial ports, we have the input for the um, pitot tube and 5 volt rails and here we have 8 outputs for motors and servos. So pretty nice. And uh, something that started to show up in the Matek board on the H743 is the separated board connected via wire where you have the USB-C port and the buzzer and you can turn off the buzzer with the switch. Super, because you usually do not want to have buzzer beeping when you are trying to tune something at home or assemble the board. And of course the DFU button is once again over here. So what you do? You hide this thing somewhere deep in your uh, foamy or a different airplane put this thing somewhere on the closer to the outside with the nicer uh, access because this the side is flat and you can just glue it with the two sided tape and you have access to usb to a buzzer to everything you really usually have to have access to and uh, this one will probably go on something, but I'm not really sure on to what yet. Maybe I will update the drift or maybe I will update somewhere something else. No idea yet. Those are your options. Thank you very much for watching and until the next one. Bye bye.